Hello chess friends and welcome to Azard of Chess channel and welcome to one of the most impressive performances that I've seen in my life in the computer chess world. Welcome to the computer bullet chess championship super final between Stalkfish 15 and the Dragon Engine. So this tournament is over and Stalkfish destroyed really the Dragon Engine with a clear performance. Look at this uh, standings after 1000 game that they played the uh, 616 points for the Stalkfish Engine and only 384 uh, for points for the dragon engine really really a pure domination by the stockfish 15 engine and we have to say it this was now a very important result for the stockfish developers because uh, if you haven't maybe followed um a couple of weeks ago stockfish lost finally one super final against lila c0 uh in the tcec competition it was a rapid uh chess time format but you see in this bullet chess championships in this also in this other uh, faster time formats basically stockfish is unbeatable and we have also now used a little bit more uh, pattern here because a uh, thousand games have been played and of course you can then really uh, show which engine is the best in the world because you played many games you played different lines different opportunities different positions different openings different sidelines and similar stuff uh, in the TCEC super finals that Stockfish lost against Lila C0 only 16 games have been played and Lila C0 won with the result eight and a half points against seven and a half points so I think that this uh, top engine uh, um, top engine the super finals have to be decided in at least 100 games where they play different openings and different sidelines so as i said still in my opinion of course uh, the stockfish 15 engine is the best engine in the world and it proved itself now as i said in many competitions it lost simply uh, one super final i think this was simply sort of a glitch in the matrix still of course uh, stockfish is unbeatable and you see now uh, with this performance it really destroyed the dragon engine and you see even in this competition lila c0 didn't even manage to reach the finals which is also uh, incredible Lila won the TCEC competition but didn't reach the super final here in this bullet chess championship so I've sorted out really a beautiful game from this super final of the computer bullet chess championship between Stockfish and the Dragon Engine it's uh, really incredible how Stockfish sees these positions uh, basically Stockfish doesn't care about the current uh, evaluations of uh, particular pieces so it's not like Stockfish is counting a rook for five points or something it always calculates the beautiful activity of uh, its pieces so it doesn't matter if it has a rook or a bishop if the bishop is much much more active then of course it's much much more powerful than a rook that's of course just passive and something and uh, i think this game shows really the beauty of peace activity in in the chess game so be prepared this was again beautiful chess game really sick chess from another dimension so let's see now the game stockfish played here with the white pieces and open with the move d4 uh here e6 was played by the dragon engine c4 and now f move f5 we have now the dutch defense the classical variation so here we have g3 the so-called uh, fianchetto attack by white we have knight to f6 and after bishop to g2 basically uh black needs now to make a reaction i think in the next couple of moves black is already showing his cards of what kind of an opening line he's trying to do usually what you're trying to do is many times you're playing the so-called stonewall setup with d5 c6 bishop to d6 and then you are trying to get a nice grip around the square e4 but in the continuation here uh dragon went into a more positional line with bishop to e7 in the continuation knight to f3 we have now the move d6 and this move d6 is a flexible pawn structure it allows many times uh, black uh, to maybe push the pawn on e5 to break and enter here uh, in the center of the board then of course black is trying to get some kind of an activity with g5 uh, g4 maybe h5 h4 like in the king's indian if you're familiar of course with the king's indian from black's perspective not the same of course because this is far away from being a king's indian but i think the same motifs are happening many times the king side attack is the basic goal here of blacks to simply push the pawns further of course this move e5 has to be further prepared but it's basically the main strategic goal so in the continuation we have now king side casting king side casting also by dragon knight to c3 and now we have the so-called ilin genevsky uh, variation which is now uh, this move queen to e8 and you see now this move is already a preparation to play the move e5 the queen is lined up now on the e file and if you even get challenged with ideas of knight to b5 uh, here by black then you have always the opportunity to uh, reroute your bishop to d8 where you are protecting your c7 pawn and then the e file gets liberated and then you're trying to push the pawn on the e5 even i think knight to a6 is working as a defensive idea against a potential uh, knight to b5 move so as i said it's really annoying sometimes to play against this line but 
Stockfish uh, will really sheer, uh, show the best way how to play against this line. Stockfish plays simply b4. This move b4 is preventing uh, black to come uh, to uh, with the knight on c6 because usually the, uh, what you want to do from black's perspective you want to play knight to c6 and then you want to hit the pawn on e5 bishop to uh, d8 as we said then you support further the e5 and then you launch a central break through e5 e4 f uh, f4 as we said h6 g5 g4 and similar stuff so this is again your main strategic goal so here the continuation a5 uh, was played by drag we have b5 and stockfish is now occupying the Fifth rank has of course now a space advantage on the queen side and it's also preventing the knight to come on his beautiful square c6 so that's why here knight from b to d7 has to be played by dragon it's a different idea of course you still have the opportunity to push the pawn on e5 but now you have blocked out a little bit your light square bishop which is of course not uh, the best way you want to play knight to c6 and then you want have this line liberated for the bishop so it's i think also decent method but of course it's not optimal the move knight to c6 would be much much better so here the continuation we have now the move a4 by uh, stockfish and now we have c5 uh, by the dragon engine if you play for instance something like e5 immediately you can do it but i think uh, you rushing simply into the attack why develop simply slowly and surely is uh, keeping here a calm game and even if you play i don't know e4 look at this knight to h4 is already hitting the pawn on f5 as we said this bishop should i think protect here the pawn now you have to make a reaction something like knight to b6 okay you could also maybe try to attack the pawn but look at this after f3 uh we you can play maybe here the move g5 but you lose it so this is not possible so if you play something like e takes f3 then of course we have rook to f3 and if you pick up now the pawn on c4 we can also pick up now the pawn on f5 and then eventually we'll hit the pawn here on e4 and suddenly white is taking over here in the center of the board white has now a dominant position with these pieces the rook is active the knight is very active i'm not sure if black would even give up the bishop here for a knight the rook would come then very active into the game you have several light score problems here so you you should not give up of course your light score bishop in these types of positions so that's why i think here in this particular line um white should be much much better so uh, you see after move a4 e5 is so far not working because of this weak f5 pawn that's i think now the main reason why uh, dragon didn't go into this line so after move a4 we have now c5 uh, breaking and entering with a different idea uh, now at least uh, you kept now here the structure very healthy on the king side we have now d takes the c5 and after knight to c5 it seems so that dragon has a good game that dragon has regrouped has this powerful knight has also played a beautiful blockade against the backward pawn on c4 uh what i really don't like in white's position is really this backward pawn on c4 this pawn could be attacked maybe with rook to c8 if something gets cleared on the c file this could be really a vulnerable square but stockfish will again show how to play even with such a structural weakness stockfish continues simply with bishop to a3 is hitting now the knight on c5 and is trying to get now the e4 goal the e4 goal is now of course the main method because you're not tolerating uh here the position you're not tolerating these three mobile pawns in the center of the board you're trying now really to open the center with this e4 idea so in the continuation knight to d7 we have rook to e1 preparing e4 queen to f7 and now e4 finally here by stock for 15. then we have bishop to f6 uh, attacking the knight but now a beautiful move here by stockfish knight to d4 centralizing the knight which is of course a good choice this knight is very powerful from this from the square and has of course attacking chances and now in the in this beautiful center so after f takes e4 knight to e4 knight takes e4 and rook to e4 you see now the pawn on e6 is hanging so okay now i think stockfish slow down really here the pace of uh, of um, uh, black's attack okay you have still these two connected paths uh, pardon me uh, pawns in the center but suddenly they are weak i think they're becoming really an object of white's attack suddenly white can attack this pawn so in the continuation knight to c5 you have to play this move because the d6 pawn was weak in the continuation rook to e2 very important move to connect the rook to the second rank because there are some tactical threats around the square f2 so in the continuation king to h8 rook to a2 uh, e5 hidden attacking the knight and now bishop to c5 and this was a good good choice here by uh, stockfish 15 because stockfish realized after move e5 that basically this bishop got blocked out by its own pawn that's why 
the bishops in this blocked on pawn structures are not so impressive, I think. So after move bishop to c5 and d takes c5, notice that we have reached already this position where the bishop is paralyzed by its own pawns. And basically what you want to get out of this uh, sequence is to maybe reach this kind of a position, maybe trade off everything and you could maybe continue with the sort of a bad bishop strategy where you um, could maybe a better knight here, especially in the center of the board, against your opponent's bad bishop on f6. That's, I think, from White's perspective, sort of your main strategic goal. You're trying to reach this kind of a position, even if you put some queens there, even if you put some rooks there, but basically... Uh, uh, we are applying here just a strategy that's created by uh, the minor piece ability here to play. I think you see uh, this is a perfect example how the knight and the pawn structure can create basically uh, here a strategy for you. Uh, from this point on, I think it's obvious what Stockfish is trying to do here. Stockfish is trying, as we said, to maybe trade off these bishops, to maybe trade off these rooks even off the board. But even if these pieces are kept on the board, what Stockfish is trying to do is keep uh, black with this bad bishop on f6. Whatever happens, don't trade off any of your pieces for this bishop on f6. This bishop has to stay here on the board in order to apply this bad bishop strategy. So here the continuation bishop to d5. A beautiful tempo. The bishop gets out and now it's even very, very well placed here. And even if uh, in some occasions, of course, this is not possible immediately, but even if black somehow covers later or trades off the bishops on e6 it doesn't matter that's exactly what we wanted to get although our powerful uh, or our bishop is powerful on d5 but even if in some lines a bishop to e6 happens just trade it off and then reroute your knight somehow somehow to d5 and then we would reach this perfect position that we wanted to get in the first place so we're getting rid of any piece that can defend the d5 square so now we really, really already uh, apply this uh, beautiful strategy we have queen to e7 knight to f3 and now after bishop to g4 queen to e1 now the pawn is a little bit hanging here in the continuation rook to e8 and now after move h3 uh stockfish kicks away here the bishop if you play bishop to h3 then we simply pick up of course also uh this pawn and this could be very dangerous then for black white could create here a distant pass pawn on the a file so uh, that's why dragon didn't go into this line dragon played bishop to e6 we have rook to e4 and now after bishop to f5 here stockfish shows really the great position skills stockfish plays now queen to a5 anyway and uh, sacrifice the rook for the exchange because after bishop to e4 and bishop to e4 notice okay <laughs> white is down the exchange but still it's almost like black is playing without even this piece or without even the bishop on f6 it's almost like uh Stockfish has two minor pieces for the rook here because of this paralyzed bishop. This bishop is simply not good. And also what we have to notice, it's uh, also an isolated pawn here, which is also weakness. Even if you somehow, maybe, I'm not sure where you should reroute your bishop. Even on this diagonal, you cannot activate it because uh, here the pawn on c5 is standing in your way. So even if you somehow reroute your bishop somewhere, Still the e5 is weak, so I think that's now also one strategic problem here in black's position. So now a really brilliant positional sacrifice here by Stockfish paralyzing basically every piece now in black's camp. So f from queen to e6, queen to c3, protecting of course um, uh, the pawn on c4. And it's also cool that Stockfish didn't want to play here bishop to d5 because Stockfish is playing the blockade also here. Uh, because if in some occasions e4 happens, then of course this bishop is coming into the game. So that's why very, very important to also keep the bishop here on e4. So in the continuation, queen to c3, we have b6, king to g2, improving first a little bit the position here, connecting the pieces, keeping them glued together where everything is protecting each other, really, really good move here. Uh, bishop to d8, here dragon is desperately trying to get the bishop some point in the game, but look at this, even if you reroute it here, it doesn't change any activity of the piece. So here in the continuation, rook to d2, bishop to f6 again, h4, rook to e7, and now rook to d5. Notice that uh, never uh, Stockfish never allowed this pawn to get advanced because I think if in any occasions you play maybe bishop to c2 or something, and even if you push the pawn and lose the pawn here from black's perspective, I think black would even sacrifice the pawn 
just in order to get this bishop somehow into the game. So um, that's why a very, very nice positional here played by Stoffer 15. So after rook to d7, rook takes d7, queen to d7, and now a5. A very important move, creating here a uh, supported passer on the queen side. B takes a5, queen to a5, again an attack against the pawn on um, c4, queen to a2, we have g6, queen to b3, bishop to d8. Look how bad really this bishop is, really brilliant strategy here by the fish. Now finally bishop to d5, queen to f6, and now after queen to e3, as we said, black is sacrificing the, pe uh, the pawn, pardon me, just in order somehow, really somehow to liberate the diagonal, but now it's a little bit too late. You have lost, I think, too much material. Uh, first of all, you have lost two pawns, uh, two pawns and uh, one minor piece for the rook. And also, white's minor pieces are much, much more active. And also, we have the supported passer. So, I think um, the compensation that you got for the lost rook is simply too much to handle here for black. So, that's why a really, really uh, great choice here by uh, Drag. Maybe to open somehow the diagonal. But um, it's, of course, not possible anymore. Too many things happen. Meanwhile, now, it's not, uh, it's not defendable anymore, this position for black. So, king to g7, queen to e3, queen to e7, queen to c3 check, queen to f6, queen to d to h6 now after knight to h2 we're trying uh, to reroute the knight maybe here to g4 attacking also the h6 pawn we have queen to d4 queen to e2 rook to f5 and now after knight to f3 uh, we have here queen to f6 maybe it was maybe even time i don't know maybe to sacrifice uh somehow the rook maybe going into simplified line but still of course this should be a much much better position uh for for black uh, pardon me for white f from knight to f3 the dragon went into this line queen to f6 queen to d2 we have queen to e7 knight to h2 we have now the move h5 now again knight to f3 so stockfish is not rushing here stockfish is trying to search for the best course now on the board queen to d6 queen to uh b2 king to h7 queen to a1 and now after queen to f6 a check we have king to h6 bishop to e4 attacking the rook and now finally uh rook to f3 here the uh, dragon is hoping to get this opposite color bishops um, end game sort of where many times the games end in a draw but it's of course a different story after bishop to f3 bishop to b6 uh, queen to d7, bishop to a5, now this pawn is hanging, again bishop to b6, bishop to d5, now after queen to d8, queen takes d8, and bishop to d8, it seems so maybe in some occasions this position black could hold, but actually this is simply too much to handle, two pawns uh, more here for white, and the problem is that the position is stretched, they are simply too far away, you cannot hold the position now, there is simply a clear path in order to include the king into the game, uh, many of her pawns are also light squares, uh, they can be attacked, of course, by the light square bishop. So it's now, of course, a completely, completely winning end game here for for white. So king to f3, bishop to c7, king to e4. The king is marching towards the center. G5, h takes g, king takes uh, g5, and now after bishop to e6, a uh, very important move, not allowing here the king to come closer to the pawns, so not allowing this path g4, h3, maybe to get somehow. Uh, again, play an attack against the pawn on f2. So, bishop to b6, f4, king to f6, king to uh, d5, bishop to a5, bishop to h3, king to e7, and now finally uh, the king is very, very active here now with just are trying to push the pawn so bishop to e1 b6 bishop takes the g3 now king to uh, c5 okay king bishop to a uh, bishop to h2 now stockfish plays simply further with the king king to b5 and now connects base this uh, beautiful two uh, passers here king to e8 we have now the move c6 um king to d8 and now king to a6 not allowing this king to come closer if the king would be uh here on b8 then of course it's a different story i think this should be a draw because of the opportunity to maybe sacrifice uh to your bishop for two pawns then maybe you can hold this position but now not like this because now after move king to b7 king to e7 c7 and now you can sacrifice maybe the bishop for one pawn but the other will be will be promoted for sure so king to d6 we have a promotion after a couple of checks we have here a bishop to e5 queen to e5 a couple of checks again here stoffers promoted the new queen and here after a couple of checks and queen to e3 the game was over because of this beautiful beautiful checkmate so Really great game, really nice positional stuff by Stock 15, sacrificing the rook for the exchange, but then paralyzing um, here the whole board, not allowing here the drag engine to breathe. Really beautiful bad bishop strategy. You should really realize this possibility when your opponent 
is having here this bishop like this uh, for instance in this position then it's time to trade off everything till your opponent is left uh, with this piece but of course you have to be careful you have to activate your pieces you have to notice uh, other possibilities of your opponent you have to also at least take some pawns if you're playing exchange sacrifice because you have to create passers uh, here stockers did that and played this a uh, really beautiful positional brilliancy so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game i really enjoyed it a lot interesting ideas of uh, the dutch defense for sure uh, if you want to see more beautiful positional and tactical games like this check out my comments chess games play by computer series here's the link of our beautiful playlist we have here more than more 400 games uh, like this really beautiful sharp tactical games and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel See you soon with some more videos and what to say. Chess is the best, of course.